I'm a, I'm like afraid to see how my interview skills stack up to yours, Alana Levine. Well, this is not a competition. This is a love fest. This is a love we all fest. Love the same things, and uh, that's why we're here. Yeah. Uh, and for those of you watching at home, I'm David Gordon from Theater Mania. It is God. What day is it? It's Thursday, September seventeenth. Who knows anymore? I'm here with the great Alana Levine. You may have seen her in your good man, Charlie Brown, uh, Ballyhoo on Broadway. Uh, and you might know her from her two podcasts, Little Known Facts, which is everybody should listen to, and a newer one called And the Award Goes To, which is interviewing Tony winners about their experiences winning their Tony. Is that a, is that a fair way to sum it up? It is. It is an absolutely fair way to sum it up. And it's such a cool idea talking to people about the awards they've won. Cause I feel like, you know, if you know, if you know like the Broadway press world, there's the lead up to the Tonys, there are all the awards leading up to the Tonys. And it's, there's so much pressure on all these people that I'm sure like the night of is just like a pressure cooker of emotion. What's been really fun about doing this is that, you know, whenever you, you know, I have not reinvented the wheel. There are other interview podcasts. There are other theater podcasts. There are other podcasts that people talk about Tonys, right? Yeah. So I thought, what if I'm going to do this? And this all was born out of the moment the Tonys were canceled this year. Uh -huh. I'm thinking, like, as complicated as awards are, it is a way that we get to share our tiny community globally. Right. And it is the way that people who don't live in New York have grown up learning about musicals and loving musicals. So the idea itself is beautiful. Um, we can talk later about is, is, should there be a winner as opposed to just a celebration, but that's, you know, I, I don't work for the league and that's another conversation, but yeah. the, the way into this episode each with each week, it's with each guest weekly is we listen to their speech, um, which most of them, and by the way, most of my guests have won multiple Tonys. So A, it was interesting seeing like which one they chose. Right. Um, and then we hear why. But also I listened to the speech with them. And, and as I said, like for most of them, they have not heard it in many years or for some of them, not even since the night that it happened. Right. Um, so in real time, like going through it and then getting to talk to them the second, you know, the recording is done of the speech and then just it ended up being the best launching pad for a conversation because it brings them back specifically to the moment their name was called, which is like, as an actor, it's such a great emotional recall exercise, yeah. literally hearing their name. And so I think the unfair part is it brings back their physical, like feelings inside to hear it, all the anxiety comes back. Um, but it just ended up being a great answer to how to start this show in a unique way. Um, and thank you to the Tony Awards for allowing me to share the speeches because they own them, even though my guests wrote them. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, it was very complicated. And, you know, my my thing in life is to always be completely transparent. I do not want to use anything. I don't even take a Sharpie from like that the stage manager puts up, you know, day yeah. one put out all the school supplies. I'm like, I will leave this till tomorrow. So um, and my dad's an attorney, so I'm very litigious about this stuff. And so luckily, I think because the awards at the time weren't happening and this was such, um, I don't know, I think a, a love fest, they generously allowed me to use, you know, the speeches. Um, and I'm so grateful because if they didn't, the entire idea for my podcast <laughs> would not have worked. So, yeah. How, how did you get into podcasting to begin with? Because I feel like you've been doing little known facts for oh, four years. years. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I, I as, a, as a performer, I've done a lot of books on tape or voiceover work, and I've always loved the relationship um, between the voice and the microphone and sort right. of learning, learning the intimacy of that relationship. Um, I've done radio plays. Like it's always been my favorite thing to do. And also it doesn't matter what you're wearing or yeah. if you're wearing makeup. So as a lady actress, it's even better when it's <laughs> your audio. Um, and it was one of those serendipitous things where I'd been thinking about like, what can I do? Uh, I have children. Um, I love doing plays. It's really hard being gone eight shows a week. Is there any 
creative outlet I can find for myself where I get to celebrate the thing I love. And then through like a bunch of like breadcrumbs that were kind of leading me down a path, um, a friend invited me to do it. He's like, I have this company, I make podcasts, and I just have a feeling. He's very sweet. He's like, you know, every time I talk to you, I find myself telling you things that I've never told anyone. And I don't know what you're putting in my drink. But um, and what I was putting in his drink was the fact that I loved him and I listen. Yeah. Right. All the skills you have as an actor. And he and I talked about that this that day that like the way you're a journalist every time you're exploring a new part whether it's a fictional character or historical real person um it's all asking questions right like that's what we do as actors right. and, and being at a place of like complete relaxation on stage means you're actually listening to the person that you're acting with so i found that even though my instinct was to be like i love listening to podcasts i'm I wouldn't know how to do that. Um, I sort of took a beat and was like, well, let me try it. And then the rest was history when Sla John Slattery was my first guest. He's an right. old friend of mine. Yeah. Um, it was very easy to get the rest of my incredibly talented crew of guests that have come on. But I really thought, like, what should I do a podcast about? And I thought, I hear the most incredible stories in the dressing room every okay. night. Right. I'm sure. And what if I could share them? And what if I found people who were willing to share what the truth is of, of having the life of an artist? Yeah. And even when you're super accomplished and super famous and Oscar winning or Tony winning, um, the day to day is just really challenging and unique to every person. And it's hard for everybody. Yeah. I mean, and it really is. Yeah. Um, and also I wanted their tricks and tips. I was like, I'm going to have Julianne Moore on so I can find out, like, how do I get that shade of red? Like, it was all selfish. Or, like, how do you prepare, yeah. you know, Cynthia Dixon? You have stage right. fright? Oh, my God. Then I'm okay. Like, it really was, like, just very right. selfish. How can I find out the tricks and tools of the trade from my good friends who I might be too shy to ask directly the question? How do I write a song as good as Joe Icon? Like, that sort of thing. Exactly. Yeah. And so now I know how. So it's perfect. Yeah. I'm so right. Yeah. Right. Uh, how did you come up with the, like, have you been thinking of the idea for, and the award goes to for a while? No, I, you know, I started another podcast speaking of Joe Iconis uh, called how to be more chill because uh -huh. I thought that the world of how that show, the world of fandom demanding something come to Broadway as opposed to producers and reviewers demanding right. it. The global sensation that was Be More Chill was so fascinating to me. As a person who didn't grow up with social media, like I'm catching up to all of this. Yeah. And the idea that it- Well, your kids are probably on social media. Yeah. So, so they're they're the ones who like do it for me. Yeah. They, for, I mean, literally I, what I know how to do is the interview, everything yeah. else. Although I really did write that tweet about you this morning. That was not, there was no ghostwriter writing my tweet. Um, but I, I, I started exploring that one because I thought, wow, that's incredible. And I wanted to sort of get deep into what Be More Chill was. Yeah. Um, and that brought me to the Broadway Podcast Network. And then. Um, Where you can find out the award goes to. Exactly. Which is they are now producing and hosting this new one. And they were like. They're always like, what What else do you want to do? I mean, yeah. they're like the greatest producers in the world. And then the morning the Tonys were announced as canceled, it just came to me. I was like, wait, what can I, how can we bring something uh, this year to people who really do love those awards? I mean, we forget, you know, I've... I've said this before, like, it's amazing to me, the the emails I get from like, for little known facts right. from people who are like secretly, you know, where they live or their religion, they're not allowed to listen to Broadway music. So they, the idea that there are sort of people secretly listening to this podcast yeah. and sharing with me like sort of what it means to have access. Um, I wanted to bring a little more joy in a new context. So this was how I came up with it. Yeah. So tell us who you've had so far. I know you have had Patty Lapone. Patty Lapone, I wish I had the list in front of me. Patty Lapone, Judith Light, Norbert Leo Butts, Karen Olivo, Nikki M. James. Amazing people. BD Wong, Laura Benanti, um, Cynthia Nixon, 
I don't know. There, there's more. Yeah. I can't yeah. remember. Oh, John Benjamin Hickey. Yeah, but it's amazing people. Do you just like how do you get them? Do you reach out to They're them? They're my friends. They're my yeah. brilliant friends. And yeah. And I feel like they're just the most generous people. That's why they're winning awards, not just because they're the most talented, but because their willingness to share yeah. um, their journey with such honesty and integrity and hilariousness. Oh, I'm sure. Um, like, like, Edith White, you, that's the other one. Yeah, what did you learn from like Patty LuPone? Because which one did she use? She used Gypsy. Yeah. And I so have no idea that she, maybe, maybe because I'm not, in chat rooms and Broadway, you know, vlogs the way other people are religiously. I did not know that Arthur Lawrence had banned her from. Oh Italy. yeah, right. So, so the story of how she got Arthur to allow her to do this production of Gypsy um, was fascinating. And Scott Rudin is a part of that story. Um, and I want people to listen, but that's a great teaser. I also did not know that she performed with a broken toe the night of the Tonys. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, yeah. And that yeah. a special yeah. shoe was created yeah. for her. So now when you watch the clip, just look at her feet. Don't even worry about her voice. Um, but how, how much pain she was in because of Arthur's dismissal of her, because of a misunderstanding they had about a different show many years like decades, ago. Like decades earlier too. Decades and, and like what pain it was. And you think about Patti Lapone, you don't automatically think vulnerable, right? That's right. not the first word that comes to mind um, if you're playing Family Feud. Right. Uh, and so her vulnerability, like we know how funny she is. We know how brilliantly talented she is. We know that she is a legend. We know all the things that make her just the most incredible performer who never repeats herself, right? Like she's fresh every night, no matter what show she's doing and cares so deeply, but her vulnerability and emotion and the way she shares this story was just really inspiring. Yeah. And then you have someone like Judith Light who won two back to back. And then the the one, so I was like, which one do you want to choose? And she's like, I want to, I want to choose, you know, she won also for her incredible work um, for the LGBTQIA plus community. And yeah. so she won this humanitarian award, which is a very short list of incredible people uh, who have won it before and, and why she wanted to do that. And her conversation with me about her advocacy being born out of a time when so many of her friends were dying and how scary that was and how many people sort of tried to get her not to be an advocate and not to sort of make noise about it and how outrageous and impossible based on who she is, yeah. uh, her character and people like Elizabeth Taylor, you know, icons who had come before her right. who, who were such incredible uh, advocates and and so vocal and weren't like, well, it might affect my career, you know? Right. And um, also she just talks about being welcomed back to the theater community after being gone for 100 years right. in a way. Um, so yeah, just her compassion. The thing about all of them is like, we're talking about something so intense, like the AIDS epidemic and Hickey's too, talking about the normal heart, but every episode is also so funny. Yeah, people's humor. I, I think that's what gets us through life. And every one of these guests is also just telling these heartbreaking stories with such hilarious anecdotal material. Well, you were talking about before how intense B.D. Wong's was. Or not He's one of my oldest friends. He yeah. played my little brother and you're a good man, Charlie Brown. He is someone I love. You know, we call each other brother and sister, you know, right. Linus and Lucy. It's, it's spilled over into our lives. And I had no idea that had the Me Too hashtag existed during his M Butterfly experience, that that would absolutely have been named. Yeah. Um, and he, and I hadn't known that. He was like, I never told you. I was like, no. And so he's revealing all that was incredible and how much he loves John Lithgow and what a guide and generous co-star that was you know bd was completely green he had never yeah. done a broadway show before but to know that that director had really manipulated him and 
so many aspects of that process yeah. in a way that were, could have really been ultimately a lifetime of emotional detriment. Right. Thank God they weren't. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're, how do you, how did you become an interview? Like, that's a terrible question to ask, but like, or for, to phrase it. But like, I think, you, I think it started out, it would be you and me just recording this. Yeah. Like, it didn't start out with me thinking about it as an interview podcast. It was, oh my God, these amazing friends have said yes. Um, I want to share them. Yeah. They're hilarious. They're brilliant. They're talented. Their journeys. I know their stories and they're so interesting. I know their struggles. Um, what if I just, pressed record while we had coffee together or a glass of wine together. So that, never... that's my method sort of like, I hate the, I hate the sort of scripted. Okay. I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions now and then you're going to answer. I love when it feels like a conversation. Right. And I it does the thing that I do do as if it were a more traditional interview show is days and days and days of preparation. Yeah. I watch everything. I can get my, I watch every interview. I read every interview. I watch everything they've done that I haven't already seen um, so that I can go anywhere with them. So yeah. I don't have questions in front of me, but I am a deeply researched host. Right. Um, yes. So I think it's the combination. And again, David, that's just like acting. Like you do tons of homework and you do all this character background and you rehearse and rehearse and rehearse. And then, the idea is you you cross the threshold between backstage and on stage, and you forget about all that work, and you're just in the moment. Yeah. So I feel like it's like that. It's so interesting. Yeah. Because I hate um, I hate when it, when I do interviews and it just feels like I'm reading from a script. I love for it to just be spun like this. This feels very spontaneous to me, and I just yeah yeah. Yeah, I mean that that's how I'm doing it. There are people who are, you know, the most skilled interviewers and they have a real arc and they yeah. start with, you know, a softball question and right. they end up playing. I mean that there there's all sorts of ways to do it. I mean I just think for me and also I just that's not I wasn't there to be a, right. an interviewer. Right. Who's your dream guest? For both. <laughs> You know, I think it would be, I mean, this is so kind of obvious. Um, I haven't, I know him, but I haven't had Lin-Manuel um, uh, on either of my shows. I feel like he is, and I'm sort of happy about that. I feel like I want to have him when there aren't one million things coming out on the very same day of other interviews that he's right. done. Yeah. Um, so I would say that would be, you know, anyone for me, it's who do I want to say thank you to? Who do yeah. I want to say thank you to publicly? Yeah. Um, and so I think what he's done on every level is <laughs> amazing. Um, so I guess Lynn. That's a good one. Yeah. That is a good one. Uh, Alana, thank you for your time. Oh, my God. Thank you. Thank you. If you ever need a distinctly and considerably less famous guest for little known facts. I'm all for, I'm all for it. <laughs> I will put you in that, in that category. Yeah. Um, I would, I would, uh, I would really, any opportunity for us to keep talking would Me be. Too. I really, I really did enjoy this conversation. Oh, well, good. I mean, anybody that I could just talk to that's enthusiastic about theater. Well, yeah. right now, um, until we all get to be back in a theater, getting to yeah. talk about it, getting to listen to stories about it, and just keeping us kind of satiated until we're back at work is just what we're all trying to do. So thank you for sharing stories and people who are equally passionate about the theater, like yeah. you and I are. My pleasure. And uh, people watching at home, you can find and the award goes to on the Broadway Podcast Network. Uh, wherever podcasts can be downloaded from your phone. Exactly. Uh, and Little Known Facts. Is that on Broadway Podcast Network too? or is It's that not. It's not because I had it before they right. formed and sort yeah. of already its own thing. But um, yeah, Little Known Facts is everywhere that audio content makes your ears you, happy. You can, that's a great way of saying Anywhere yeah. audio content can, that can make your ears happy. Yes. Yeah. Be well. Thank you for your time. Mwah. Bye. Thank Bye. you. And thanks everybody for watching.